It's been a pretty bumpy ride this weekend for crypto and Bitcoin, and we have some very interesting news coming out about BlackRock, Fidelity, and a huge bombshell that has hit the market that you guys are going to really want to hear about. Now, the US market's open in about 10 hours from filming this video, and as we know, we get some huge turbulence from the weekend into the market open because of the Bitcoin ETFs. And again, we're seeing the price actually work as a magnet and move moving back up before the market opens once again. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think it's very obvious that the lights of BlackRock and these big institutions are messing with the price to get it cheaper over the weekend because the markets aren't open. It seems like the most obvious thing that you would do if you were playing in both of these markets at the same time, but I'll leave that up to your judgment and let's jump into today's video. First of all, checking out the Google trends. Look at this, something very interesting is going on. We are losing interest once again in crypto and Bitcoin. People started to get excited and now this is tapering off. This is due to the fact that everyone was getting excited when Bitcoin was moving up to its old all-time high. Now, currently, we have been a little bit rejected up there. Price is going down. Everyone is turning to their family members and whoever told them about it going, see, I told you it was just a scam. Oh, I'm not interested. Watch them come back the second we re-break the $70,000 region. Watch that chart. Google Trends, crypto or Bitcoin for the last five years. Watch that trend change the second that happens. And what we're seeing on a technical level, in my personal opinion, which could be completely wrong, is a bull flag here. I did tell you guys about this trade, getting involved in it in and around this resistance region. I did actually open a trade here, one of the small ones. Here we have a Bitcoin perpetual trade. It's just in an $8 profit, but 18% gain here. And these are the kinds of trades that I like to show you guys using leverage a little bit more safe than we normally see, less chance of liquidation, less chance of losing money, that sort of stuff, and practicing profit taking. We can see here, I did continue with our trade, our say trade live on the channel with you guys. We re-added to this position after taking profits. It was in a loss. We re-added. Now we are in a gain of $170 plus our $500 realized gain. We got $400 unrealized on Sui with almost $2 thousand dollars in realized profit and we can see the same for pretty much all of these including our ethereum trade which i think will turn very soon so i'm excited about that and over on coin w opened a few positions we got solana we got avax over a hundred percent on each of those so very nice stuff if you do want to trade and you don't want to provide any personal details whatsoever no kyc don't even need a vpn you can sign up to coin w they have up to thirty thousand dollars of deposit bonuses and a totally free trading group with professional traders providing you signals for free so the links for that are down there in the description and let's check it out so we got a green morning for crypto here it's probably the night time if you are in america now but a green morning for the altcoins finally look at this we got our total three here we also broke out of a very similar bull flag that we're seeing on bitcoin here for the total three very nice here and our crypto greed and fear index like I've told you, is in greed, which means we've come actually down from extreme greed, which gives us nice opportunities in this market, in my opinion, right? One thing that is acting as a magnet, like I said, is the liquidations, okay? So we have about a billion dollars worth of liquidations now stacking up at the old all-time high, but we do also have billions multiple billions down here at the $50,000 region. Now, for me, it looks like, according to this heat map, more likely that we head upwards to liquidate these guys now because starting at about 68,000, we start to have hundreds of millions piling up into the billions all the way up to this region. So there is a lot of money for market makers and manipulators and the like to be making money here the market pushes upwards. And now we have retail, uh, sorry, institutions in this game, which is what we all asked for. This is the kind of thing that is uh, going to be happening a lot, a lot of liquidations happening. Now, obviously, we know that Grayscale over the last week has been having net huge, huge outflows, right? Massive, massive outflows. And BlackRock have not been able to keep up. BlackRock haven't been able to keep up this time round. And that is why essentially the price has been going down because there has been net outflows. Grayscale have been selling a ton. 
uh, iShares, BlackRock, Bitcoin Trust have been buying a ton, but not enough to plaster the gap this time. But like I've been saying, Grayscale's selling will slow down and people aren't ready for what happens when that happens. Now, the SPX, the over in the normal, the normal world of money, right? All-time highs still. People don't like to say that Bitcoin and crypto are connected to the financial markets, but they are. They very much are, as we can see. Bitcoin all-time high, S&P 500 all-time high. That is what's going on. And when we see this start to crash, we may be in for some trouble for crypto. So be watching closely for that. Now, with that said, we do finally have a little bit of news here over in CoinMarketCap to go through. We are up almost 4% overall on the market. Bitcoin finally up on the 24 hours. Ethereum finally up. BNB up. Everything is up. Solana is up. And this is why we practice buying the dip when everything is bloody. Slowly dollar cost averaging into our portfolios. There's no reason to be dumping all of our money into the market, but slowly dollar cost averaging. As you know, in the strong bounce portfolio, we did buy some on the dip recently. We did add to these positions because we had that pullback. And this is what we have to be doing. We have to be adding to our positions that we have strong conviction in when the market goes down. We need to be going against the market. We need to not act as a generic retail trader. We need to go against the market. Most retail traders go with the market. They sell in fear. They buy in euphoria. And that is why 99% of people lose money in this market. I cannot stress this enough. Don't be a normal retail trader. Get in early, but also get out. Buy in fear, sell in euphoria, right? That doesn't mean buying as much as you humanly can in fear and selling everything in euphoria because that would mean timing perfectly the bottom and timing perfectly the top. No, 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 that's not what happens. What we do is, or what I do, is I dollar cost average into positions and then I dollar cost average out. Solana is an example. A bunch of these are examples. My Bitcoin miners are an example. If you've been watching this channel over the last year, I got into them early. I dollar cost averaged into them. We turned a massive profit and I started to get out slowly. Now, just before we jump further into this video, I want to introduce you guys to a potential opportunity in this market because we got to stay paying attention, all right? This is DBZ token and this is a tribute to the legend, the mastermind behind the record-breaking Dragon Ball Z franchise. Now, they have a huge community and fan base, of course, because it's the biggest anime series all over the world between 1985 and 2000. And the fan token like this has the potential to grow big in the crypto meme space as the anime characters are used a lot in the meme communities. And the series is still very popular today with an engagement score of 30 and popularity of five as the most popular TV show online, which is pretty insane. I actually had no idea about this. Now, this project is a tribute to Dragon Ball Z's creator, Akira Toyoma, who unfortunately passed away this month on the 1st of March. Now, this project will also be creating an NFT collection. And the concept is the Ape Club here, but the Super Saiyan Ape Club. So a little bit different to the apes that we've seen before because they are now now Super Saiyan. And there'll only be 8,888 limited NFTs. Now you can also stake your ape, your Super Saiyan ape here. When you possess a Saiyan from the Super Saiyan Ape Club collection, you're going to gain the opportunity to stake it and earn passive income. Your staking rewards are determined by the rarity of your NFT, with the higher rarities yielding higher reward rates on their SSAC dashboard. The duration of your stake and exclusivity of your NFT directly influence the amount of DBZ tokens you receive as a reward. Now on top of that, they also do have a total supply of 880 8 billion and there is a 0.8% buy sell tax. Now the team has also told me that there will be a huge celebrity artist with around 40 million followers talking about this project soon and they also have Dragon Ball Z tattoos and are a big fan of the show. So I don't know a little bit of tidbit there. Don't know if it's guaranteed but that's what the team told me all right and that's what they're telling me to tell you. Now, if we do hop over to Dex Tools, we can see here the current market cap is around 6 million with quite a strong push upwards. Now, the initial push took it from when it launched all the way as high as 43,000% gain. Now, since then, they did come back. They did pull back to a region of around a 75% drop. And since then, they have pushed up again around 150%. So to me, this chart looks relatively strong. We a big push upwards here, 
pushing all the way down to now being on the way to potentially, potentially pushing up higher. There are a lot of people here, as we can see, buying in, and this token is not listed on any major centralized exchanges yet. So with a liquidity of 186,000, there is room for this to grow. But of course, you need to go out and do your own research into this. But with the storyline, with the recent news and the amount of excitement around this, there is room for this to grow. But of course, you need to understand the risks involved in crypto. We have no idea what will happen next. If you're willing to take that risk, the links are down there in my description. Thank you to the DBZ team for sponsoring this video. And let's jump back into it. Now, we have huge things happening that was unve unveiled last week that you guys need to be aware of. Because again, like the Bitcoin ETS, I don't think people are understanding the power of this. Now, of course, we don't really want institutions in crypto. But guys, you got to kiss goodbye to that. It's no longer that anymore. We're not in this weird little realm of DGen underground guys sitting in their mum's basement. As you can see, I've actually moved out of my mum's basement. So congratulations to me. Let's do a little comment down there if you've made it this far. Just say, get me out of my mum's basement. <laughs> Finally, I'm out. But we got to understand that the institutions are moving in, okay? So we do have Coinbase here. Coinbase revealed that uh, they are backing BlackRock's 5 trillion by 2030 crypto game. Now, 2030 might sound like a long time to you, all right? But let me remind you that the Rona Ronason, the lockdown, started four years ago, four, and it's now 2024. So their plan, 5 trillion by 2030, is only six years away. It's basically the same amount of time from now since when the lockdown started to now to when they plan to have $5 trillion dollars. Oh my God, this is just huge. Now, because of this, right, we have a number of things that are happening. First of all, I want to remind you that BlackRock is currently sitting on $15.6 billion worth of assets under management in their Bitcoin trust, all right? 15 billion. Remember, they plan to have, I think it was 1% of their 9 trillion, which is 90 billion, okay? Long way to go. They basically just started. We also have... Uh, BlackRock's Bitcoin iShares iBit has been a great success, 16 billion in 11 weeks, but we are still so early. So this is what I was saying, right? 16 billion, they got 10 trillion, all right? Look, 0.16% of their assets under management they have in their Bitcoin trust. Look at that chart. <laughs> 0.16%. They want at least 1%, right? And that was before this announcement, okay? And this was all around the tokenization of uh, assets, right, or securities. BlackRock and Fidelity's ETF bombshell triggers a massive 75 trillion Bitcoin price increase prediction. Now, after Coinbase revealed it's backing BlackRock's 5 trillion by 2030 game changer, farmed stock picker and Bitcoin bull Kathy Wood has hiked her Bitcoin prediction. Betting on a coming Bitcoin price surge will give Bitcoin a market capitalization of 75 trillion. <laughs> Now, her predictions are always absolutely massive, but even if it was 10% of that, all right, look, Bitcoin sits today, right? It sits right now, not Bitcoin, crypto at 2.54 trillion, the entire market. So she predicts like what, a 30x from here? A 30x from here, right? Paying attention. Six years, 30x, all right? Not bad. Last year, we put our ball case for Bitcoin. It was 1.5 billion, all right? But with all the things that are happening, BlackRock wanting at least 1% under management, BlackRock with their 5 trillion by 2030 plan, with all of the institutional green lights and the SEC has provided, kicking and screaming through it all. The, analy the analysis we've done is that if institutional investors were to allocate a little more than 5% of their portfolios to Bitcoin, as we think they will over time, remember, BlackRock have already said they want 1%. Kathy Wood is predicting 5% over time. That will alone make Bitcoin $2.3 million. She then goes on to say that Wood's new prediction, her new prediction, is it could see a price of $3.8 million by 2030. A massive near 6,000% increase from current Bitcoin prices of 65,000 and market cap of 1.2 trillion. At 3.8, what's that? Around a, a 0.23 of a Bitcoin would make you a millionaire. 0.23, I just pulled it out of my head. It might be 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, would make you a millionaire. All right, guys? 
absolutely massive, massive stuff here. And this is all around the bombshells of BlackRock. And they normally do what they say they're going to do. Remember, they said they were going to make a Bitcoin ETF and they did it. Okay, so now they're saying 5 trillion by 2030. They want to tokenize their securities. They want to bring a huge change to the market. And this is, of course, going to continue to bolster the power and the excitement around Bitcoin. Now, I have two things I want to talk to you before we end this video. In the history of modern finance, no single indicator has been a better job, job of predicting when next global market recession will hit than when the Bank of Japan starts to raise rates. I hate to tell you guys, but here, boom, here, 2000, here, 2006, here, 2024, it's happening. Japan is starting to raise its rates. So get prepared. And one final reminder. I like this tweet. I saw it from Cloud9 Markets. If you get up in the middle of the night to check prices, then your position size is way too big. Reduce exposure and chill. This is interesting because this really reminded me of how I was in 2017. 2017's bull market was my first bull market. This may be your first bull market. Um, if you made it to this part of the video, right, my first bull market, I'm going to make it, all right? But this reminded me of 2017 simply because this is exactly what I did. I went to sleep. Just before I went to sleep, I had my phone, checking my portfolio. Middle of night, I wake up in the middle of the night to check my portfolio. I wake up again. I barely got any sleep for like three, four months. And I then lost all my money. And it was because I was overexposed. I was overly emotional. I didn't know what I was doing, right? So take a step back. If you are doing that, you might have too much money in the market and you might want to take some profits, especially if you're up five, six, seven, 10 X, 20 X on some of these positions. It might be a good idea to take some profits. Now, I'm not telling you when to sell. I'm not telling you when to buy. I'm telling you from my own experience, taking profits is one of the best things I've ever done. Even if the price continued to rise, it does not matter because profit is profit. With that said, guys, hopefully I've provided some value and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.